Okay, it's David again, and this is going to be a very exciting video for me. <laughs> when I told my son that I had over 110 videos out, he said, Dad, he says, that's going to bore a lot, a lot of people. It's really going to bore a lot of, a lot of people. So we'll see. Okay, today we have a, a privilege. Um, we have Mr. Uh, Mitt Romney, the Mormon, uh, who is running for uh, the be president of the United States and uh, we have a privilege because he's willing to speak today on his religion and his training his background and the history of the Mormon Church and his feelings his emotions how it would uh, guide him in his decisions on being president of the United States I think this is important and uh, I think most of the American people think it's important Certainly, uh, we quizzed uh, and questioned uh, Barack Obama's uh, religion when his preacher uh, just said a few things about uh, the United States and being unfair to blacks, which was true, but uh, Aryan people don't want to hear that. So uh, we've gone through uh, Barack Obama's birth certificates. Uh, we've gone through um, him having to quit his religion and disassociate himself from those kinds of beliefs and ideas. So let's see how Mr. Romney does. Will he separate himself? Oh, he's smiling at me. It's good to see you. And he's asked that the camera not be uh, shined upon him because um, the Mormon Church is kind of watching this, and um, he's indicated to me that uh, if his face shows in this kind of an interview, um, he may get excommunicated, and uh, we don't want that. Every Mormon is vital and important to this world, so we don't want him excommunicated. And the other thing is that he um, has an interpreter standing beside him, and I know sign language, and so his voice will not be heard either. And I will look at the interpreter, and she uh, will uh, let me know what his answers are. So, <clears throat> let me start off uh, with my first questions, which will be easy, and then of course we're going to get him later on, like all newscasts do because they're liberal and they're hateful and whatever. Okay, Mr. Romney, thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate you coming uh, from Park City. I believe that you own a home up there in Park City, Utah. Is that true? Uh, the interpreter saying yes, that is true. Uh, let me ask you now, um, in Park City, isn't that uh, one of the most uh, liberal areas of uh, Utah that basically people can uh, drink up there and uh, they can uh, have a lot of association with alcohol and most of the houses and uh, including your own is over a million dollars is that true <laughs> she said yes <clears throat> that's true what does that have to do with being president i don't know mr romney i'm just going to ask the questions you're not supposed to ask them all right let me ask you this mr romney um the the, the media um <clears throat> has been accused <clears throat> of uh, making your religion a, an issue with um, you running for president of the United States. Isn't it true that your founder, Joseph Smith, ran for president of the United States? Uh, Mr. Romney's kind of looking at the floor right now, but his interpreter is saying uh, he said yes, that Ms. Mr. Joseph Smith uh, ran for president of the United States. Um, did he win? Uh, no, the interpreter said he did not win. Uh, wait a minute, he's, he's saying something. Oh, oh, oh. He, he burned uh, a, uh, uh, a newspaper. He burned a newspaper building to the ground called the Expositor. And he was killed in Carthy's jail because of some of the, the shenanigans that were going on. Well, thank you, Mr. Romney. I, he's volunteered some information there that I thought he never would. Um, let me ask you, because uh, most of the American people are not clear about what the Mormons believe and are not clear about um, what your presidential process will be in deciding these questions. So I'm going to try to represent the American people and what we want to know. Um, in your religion, the founder of your religion, uh, Joseph Smith, wasn't he um, uh, uh, a person who said he found gold plates? several gold plates that were given to him by an angel and that he translated uh, what is now known as the Book of Mormon. Is that true? Uh, 
the interpreter says, yes, that happens to be true. Uh, Mr. Romney, may I ask you this? Where are the gold plates? Uh, Mr. Romney's head is kind of going like this, and he's looking down at the ground, and the interpreter is saying, the angel took them back into heaven as a test for us to believe in Joseph Smith. Oh, okay. Let me ask you another question, uh, Mr. Romney. Uh, isn't it true that Joseph Smith was uh, married to 30, more, or 30 or more women? Uh, yes, he did say yes, that's true. Is it also true that two of those girls, uh, Helen Mark uh, uh, Kimball and uh, uh, Nancy uh, Winchester, were 14 years old? Uh, Mr. Romney's kind of scratching his head, and uh, he's bowing his head, and he's saying yes. Uh, th that's true. Isn't it true that many of those wives that your founder uh, was married to were already married? He says, yeah, that's true, too. Do we call that adultery? He says, no, 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 that is not adultery. No explanation. Do we call marrying and sleeping with 14-year-old girls child molestation? He said, no, no, as long as the Lord, what's that, the Lord and a flaming sword from an angel told Joseph Smith that he was supposed to do that. Oh, okay, there's your answer, there's your answer. Thank you, Mr. Romney. Let me ask you this question here. Um, there's a lot of people that accuse your religion, which you're a part of, uh, and your name is on it, and you're active in it, of being discriminatory. Um, do you believe that's true? Oh, very quick answer, no. Uh, let's see, we do not discriminate against anyone, and we believe that all people are free and are children of God. Thank you, Mr. Romney, thank you. May I follow with a follow-up question? Isn't it true that people of African descent, black people, were not allowed to have full fellowship, priesthood, and temple blessings in the Mormon church up until 1978? Is that true, Mr. Romney? Um, he's kind of looking left and right. I think he's looking for maybe a drink of water. And uh, oh, he's answering with a question. What does that have to do with the presidency? Well, I think the American people uh, think that does have something to do with the presidency. If you're black, maybe it'd be important. So, Mr. Romney, I'm going to ask you again. Up until 1978, isn't it true that your church that you belong to, that you've been trained in, and that you support 100%, did not allow blacks to be in full fellowship, membership, having the priesthood, and going to the temple in the Mormon religion? Is that a yes or is that a no? Uh, he's kind of tapping his feet, but maybe that's a sign to the, uh, the interpreter. Oh, the interpreter says yes. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Romney, let me just follow with a follow-up question. Do you believe uh, that that was um, uh, godly inspired? Do you believe that your prophet talks with Jesus Christ? Do you think that Jesus Christ came to your prophet and said, uh, I don't want the black people having the priesthood and going to the temple. Is that what you believe? Uh, his head is going round and round, kind of like <laughs> that, that exorcist girl. But, you know, I'm just going to wait for it to stop rolling. And then, oh, 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 there's the uh, interpreter, and she's saying, um, uh, God's ways are not our ways. It doesn't matter. And what does that have to do with being president? And uh, I believe in, in uh, full civil rights of all people. Well, well, let me stop you there for a second, interpreter. Is he going to answer the question? Oh, the interpreter says no. He's not going to answer that one. Am I surprised? No. Okay, Mr. Romney, let's, um, let's go on to a couple of more uh, important issues. Uh, isn't it true that the people who crossed Joseph Smith and crossed Brigham Young. In other words, people who left the church and uh, did not uh, support them as prophets or just left that they didn't want this uh, in their life. Isn't it true that the Mormon church had a secret society called the Danites? D-A-N-I-T-E-S. Is that a yes or a no? Did they have that organization in the Mormon church? I think he's thinking. Oh, oh, the interpreter says, 
I'm not a, uh, you're not an expert in Mormon history or doctrine, but you think yes. Oh, okay. He thinks yes. Uh, isn't it true that your Porter Rockwell and others were in the Danites and have claimed to have killed over 60 people that didn't uh, believe in the Mormon church or were a threat to the church? Uh, he's bowing his head and he's saying yes. Uh, let me move to another uh, issue, Mr. Romney. You've been just wonderful. We really appreciate you giving us this uh, history and background of the Mormon doctrine. Um, the Mountain Meadows Massacre, have you ever heard of that? Uh, yes, he has. Um, isn't it true that um, the Mormons, uh, the state president and the bishops down in Washington County and down by St. George, uh, got informed that there was a, uh, uh, a wagon train of Arkansas uh, individuals migrating to California that were coming through that part of Utah. And uh, they uh, decided on their own that basically uh, these people were to be um, stopped to say the least, and going into California. Do you remember that story? Were you taught that in seminary at all? Uh, he says he wasn't taught that in seminary, but it's kind of vague in his mind, but yes, there seems to be that kind of a, oh, a rumor, a rumor that the Mormon church did this. Okay. Um, Mr. Romney, isn't it true that the Mormons... Um, intercepted that wagon train and asked them to give up their guns and their weapons of defense and that they would allow them to uh, pass into California. Isn't that true? Y yes, he said that's definitely true. Now, the important part of the question, isn't it uh, true that basically um, the Mormons shot and killed in cold blood, defenseless, 120 men, women, and children? Yes, uh, yes, that's a question. Uh, he's saying he's not quite sure if it was 120. He says that's still open to a discussion. And uh, history has not basically uh, documented that. Well, uh, we'll bear that in mind, Mr. Romney. Can you say that the event did happen? Uh, quietly, he is saying, yes, it did happen. Uh, now, isn't it true, Mr. Romney, that basically Brigham Young, who was the governor of the state and the Mormon prophet when that particular event transpired, uh, went down uh, to pay his respects, supposedly, to those that were killed at the Mountain Meadow Massacre, and he was in the company of Wilford Woodruff, uh, who is one of your uh, prophets after uh, Brigham Young. Yes, he said that's uh, true. Uh, that Mr. Uh, Brigham Young, uh, uh, President Young, you never call him Mr. Uh, uh, President Young, okay. Uh, he did go down and he did uh, pay his respects. Well, Mr. Uh, Romney, may I ask you this question? In Wilford Woodruff's journal, he was standing beside Brigham Young uh, when Brigham Young was uh, honoring, kind of putting the wreath or whatever to honor these people that had innocently died. He said in his journal that Brigham Young turned to him and on the sign down there, it said, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And Brigham said to Wilford Woodruff in person, Vengeance is mine. And I just had a little. Is that true, Mr. Romney? Uh, wait a minute. He's, he's moving in his chair, and he's uh, kind of jumping around, and his head is kind of flopping like this. And uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the interpreter to, to give me some kind of a sign, token, or symbol of what he's saying. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, he, he's saying that that's conjecture. He's saying that's circumstantial evidence. And he's saying that uh, Wilfred Woodruff may have not heard it right, and that maybe uh, he, he, what, he wrote it down wrong. Okay, he wrote it down wrong, and that Brigham Young never had anything to do with that massacre, uh, and that basically uh, it's just anti-Mormon uh, uh, anti -Mormon propaganda. Okay, well, Mr. Romney, we appreciate your answer on that one. Let me, let me ask you, um, as far as uh, loyalty, there's a lot of things about being the president, and I think uh, Barack Obama uh, kind of got this, that he was... Uh, Muslim, and they're not very loyal. In fact, they're very hostile to the United States. Has the Mormon Church ever felt uh, that the United States has been hostile to them? Oh, the interpreter says, no, of course not. 
Well, let me follow up with another question, uh, Mr. Romney. Isn't it true that when Brigham Young was practicing polygamy and would not stop it, that the Reed uh, Smoot Act was passed of no polygamy in the United States, and Brigham Young basically uh, ignored that particular federal statute? Uh, let's see, his head's going back and forth. Uh, gosh, he's. Oh, wait a minute, he's getting up, he's walking around the chair. That was seven times. Okay, now he sat back down. And the interpreter, yes, please, go ahead. Uh, the interpreter said, well, uh, uh, Brigham Young was a prophet of God, and he did not have to obey the law of the land if the Lord told him not to. Okay, there's Mr. Romney's answer. I'm just a typical Mormon answer. Now, Mr. Romney, let me ask you, do you know anything about Johnson's army? He did this to his head, and now he's thinking, hmm, now his hands are over his mouth. You know, we know that in psychology, that there are people that do that are about to lie. But anyway, uh, yes, he's, the interpreter is saying that, yes, I know about Johnson's army. Well, isn't it true, uh, Mr. Romney, that Johnson's army was a federal army coming to put down Brigham Young and the riotous Mormons in the, the Utah Territory? He said, yes, that's true. Well, wouldn't it be conceivable at that particular point that uh, the Mormons and Brigham Young had uh, negative feelings about the U.S. Uh, uh, regulations, laws, statutes, because they were aimed at against Mr. Young, oh, I'm sorry, President Young's um, Mormon religion? Uh, the interpreter is saying, uh, that's possible. We don't know because, uh, uh, let's see, we can't get inside of Brigham Young's head. Okay, I think that's a pretty fair statement. So, you don't think the Mormons then were really that upset that an army was coming to take over their buildings, their temples, and uh, their property. Uh, he's saying, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there at that time, and I haven't read any history books on that. Okay, that's a, that's a very fair answer, very fair answer. Um, let me move to another uh, thing, uh, Mr. Uh, Romney, and that is... Uh, when the um, polygamous situation uh, came to a head in Utah, wasn't it Wilfred Woodruff that wrote a letter, a uh, manifesto, uh, it's called in the Mormon church, uh, to the government, the federal government, that the Mormons don't practice polygamy anymore. Isn't that true? Oh yes, boy, he answered that quick. They don't practice polygamy anymore. We have not for 180 years and uh, we uh, don't believe in polygamy, and we obey the laws of the land. Okay, that's great, Mr. Romney, that's a, that's a great answer. Uh, isn't it true that uh, Wilfred Woodruff married more than one woman after that manifesto went, went out, and he continued to be a polygamist? Uh, he's, he's very quiet right now. He's very quiet. Did, did the prophet of the Mormon church lie to the federal government? Uh, the interpreter says, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I guess that would be on the internet. Oh my gosh, the interpreter's gone crazy. Never read the internet. Anything that is on the internet, and that is anti-Mormon, there's no truth there, and the millions of hits that Google gets are what? Sa satanic. Okay, okay, that's, that's his answer to that in the internet. Boy, they're really strong on outside information. Okay, now, Mr. Romney, let me go to uh, the question that uh, because Wilfred Woodruff did not obey the law of the land, didn't John Taylor, the next president of the church, um, write another manifesto to the federal government? Uh, he's, he's shaking his head. Yes, yes, he did. Okay. And he said that the Mormon church was no longer practicing polygamy and that basically anyone in the Mormon church would be excommunicated if they practiced polygamy. Yes. We do not practice polygamy, we obey the laws of the land, and polygamy is not part of our religion. Oh, okay, good answer. Isn't it true that John Taylor also took more polygamous wives after that document was signed? Uh, Mr. Romney is very quiet. Um, he's asked for just a moment of uh, uh, meditation. Uh, uh, wait a minute, the interpreter, uh, he wants to uh, consult with the Lord. Is this is what he's going to do when he's president? Okay, oh, oh, oh. here's his answer here. Okay, uh, it's true. He said, yeah, that is true. 
Okay, now, Ms. Arani, you're from a polygamous background, aren't you? Isn't your grandmother uh, polygamous? Yes, he says yes, that's true. Are you proud of that heritage? He is. Boy, he answers quick on those. And you see nothing wrong with that particular lifestyle um, as is presented in the United States. Oh, no. No. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Only when Muslims do it. Muslims don't have a right to be polygamous because there's such a huge group and population on the earth. There's not enough women left over for the righteous men. Okay, well, welcome to make his own comments. Now, Mr. Romney, to, to substantiate what you're saying here about polygamy, uh, in the Mormon Church. Uh, are you familiar with the Doctrine and Covenants, which is one of the scriptures that the Mormon Church believes in? Oh, yes, yes, he knows that. Very good, okay. Um, I happen to have a Doctrine and Covenants right there beside you. Would you mind just opening it up to uh, section 132 of the DNC, which the Mormons call it the DNC, but it's the Doctrine and Covenants. Oh, he's got it, okay. Uh, could you read that pretty quick? I know you're a well-educated man and you speed read and uh, being governor of uh, Massachusetts, I'm sure. Oh, oh, the interpreter says he's got it, he's got it. Now let me ask you, uh, uh, Governor Romney, Mr. Romney, Elder Romney, President Romney, I don't know what um, uh, signifies what you are right now. Doesn't section 132 of the Mormon scriptures, which are used every day and that the Mormons bear their testimony, that these are from the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it true that one, section 132 is written by Joseph Smith? You said, yes, it is written by Joseph Smith. Well, isn't it true that the gist of that entire section is that the new and everlasting covenant, which he speaks of, is plural marriage, and that a man that is not engaged in plural marriage will not go to the highest heaven. The Mormons believe in three heavens, but he will not get to the celestial kingdom. Isn't that true? He's kind of rocking back and forth and forward and back, and, uh, well, I hate to see him throw the Doctrine and Covenants that far away, but, um, oh my God, now he's out of his chair and he's jumping up and down on it. You know, I didn't, I didn't mean to ask that kind of a question. I get the guy going. Uh, Mr. Romney, do, do you mind just sitting down? We'd kind of like to tie this up. I don't think you have to rip the pages out of there. Uh, no, that's the Mormon Church's job to rip that out. Uh, okay, well, he's ripped out D&C 132 and he's... I don't think you should eat it. For, for God's sake, sit down. This is a press interview. You don't eat D&C 132. Okay, he swallowed it. He swallowed it, so he's back. He's coming to the chair. Okay, he, he's back. He's back. Now, I guess in summary here, what we kind of like to get a feeling of, uh, Mr. Romney, President Romney, uh, um, Governor Romney, I don't know. Can I just, you know, do this as a sign that you are the glorious uh, Mitt Romney? A lot of people think that um, if they elect you to the President of the United States, that the Mormon prophet would be running the United States of America and thus the world. <laughs> the interpreter says, that's the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard of in my, uh, in my life. And the Mormon prophet has a hard time just running the Mormon church. He could not r run the world. Only I can do that. Well, that's a reasonable answer. Well, then let me ask you this as a follow-up question, Mr. Romney. If you had to list in priority the things that you love the most, and the list included your family, America, the Mormon Church, and God, how would you list those in the way you would think, in the way you would be president of the United States, representing all the rest of us who could be atheists, Buddha, Muslims, Hindus, you know, how would you represent that in your own mind? What has the most priority? Okay, uh, the interpreter, he's given some long thought to this, but the interpreter is saying uh, the number one thing that he loves is uh, God. Okay, well, that's probably a response that many Americans are going to be happy with. Uh, his second is basically uh, his religion. Uh, Mr. Romney, I'm not sure a lot of Americans are going to like that answer. And the third uh, is his family. Well, he's a good family man, and, and I, I can see that. And, uh, oh, bringing up the rear is America, the country America? I see. Let me ask you, because we, we're talking about America, doesn't the Mormon Church have a belief 
in a doctrine that, quote, the Constitution will hang by a thread and that a priesthood holder of the Mormon Church will save it and the United States. Do you remember ever hearing that in the church? Uh, he said, yes, he's heard that. Are you a priesthood holder? He said, yes, he is. Is it possible that in somehow in your mind you think you might be the, uh, the Messiah or the uh, Savior uh, of the U.S. Constitution because uh, it's been said many years a priesthood holder would come in and save it? Uh, the, the interpreter is saying, uh, I don't want to be that arrogant uh, and that irresponsible and uh, the Mormon Church certainly has some hidden agendas and basically, say that again, basically the answer is yes. You do believe. You're the one. The interpreter said, yeah, he does. He believes he's the one. Mr. Ronnie, in this interview as we're sitting right here, are you wearing the magic garment underwear of the Mormon Church? Uh, the interpreter says, uh, David, are you wearing Calvin, Calvin who, Klein underwear? Uh, Mr. Romney, I'm going to answer your question and I'm going to say yes. Now, could you answer my question? He said no. <laughs> okay, let's see if I could rephrase it another way. Mr. Romney, are you familiar with Mormon garments in the Mormon church that people who have been through the temple must wear them day and night? Uh, he said yes, he's familiar with that. Have you been to the Mormon temple? and received your endowments? He said, yes, when I got married. And so, basically, you receive those instructions, and if you believe in the Mormon religion, you must be sitting there right now in Mormon garments. Is that true? He's not going to answer that question. His underwear has nothing to do with, with what? With uh, being president of the United States. Okay. A little touchy on that one, so we'll just kind of let that one go. Well, Mr. Romney, let's kind of uh, uh, um, sum this up. Uh, do you think that your religion is going to have any uh, basis in making decisions as President of the United States concerning perhaps Israel, that the uh, Mormon Church has certain beliefs about a promised people and the, uh, the uh, um, chosen people and other kinds of war decisions and being Commander-in-Chief? Do you think that... Uh, Joseph Smith um, starting his own army uh, to protect the Mormons and some of the hostilities that the Mormons have uh, experienced. Uh, do you feel that uh, you have any kind of uh, revenge or any kind of, uh, you know, we're going to make this even now? Do you have any of those kinds of feelings or emotions? Uh, the interpreter, this is complex. Um, Mr. Romney is saying uh, Mormons do not have revenge. We, we love all people. The people we have killed uh, deserve to be killed. We were commanded by God to kill certain people. Um, and he says that basically uh, the, Mormon church, uh, the Mormon church would not have any uh, uh, bearing on his decisions as president of the United States. Well, I think that that's a relief, Mr. Romney, for uh, you to say those things. Now let me ask you perhaps the final question. And that is this, uh, do you value your membership in the Mormon Church? Oh my gosh, the interpreter, of course I do. Um, uh, it's one of the most important things in my life. It makes up my uh, personality and, and my family and our belief system, our morality, our economics. It, it's everything to us as a family. Okay. Let me ask this, if you would please. If you said or did something as President of the United States and the Mormon prophet called you quietly under the radar and said to you, Mr. Romney, Elder Romney, President Romney, we don't think that's the way Jesus would do that. And I've spoken to Jesus and he's commanded me to have you make that decision a little bit differently than you did. Is that a possibility, Mr. Romney? Oh my gosh, he has an answer for this one. No, 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 no. Okay. Then a final question, 
Mr. Romney, and I, and I promise this will be the final one. If the Mormon prophet threatens to excommunicate you from the Mormon church because of one of your presidential decisions, that you will lose your family, their ceilings to you for eternity, your baptism, yet you're not a baptized member of Christ, and you lose um, all your respect and all of your ego and all of the uh, Mormon um, belief system. Could that possibly bear in on making a decision or changing a decision by you as President of the United States? Mr. Romney is silent. The interpreter is silent. And now I'm silent. Thank you, Mr. Romney. It's been very nice talking with you. You have a good day. Bye.